Today we're going to waterproof a tub and shower surround in a bathroom. I want to give you tips on how to do this. It's very easy, especially with a lot of the new systems we have today. So I just want to jump right into it and give you the tips and give you the confidence to be able to do this yourself. A few tools that we really need is one, we're going to just use a roofing nailer. You can obviously use a screw gun, but this quickens up the speed of installing some of our furring strips. We'll get into that later here in the video on how to install these and what we're using them for. A spade bit for around your tub spout or a shower port. We're gonna need a corner trial and a just a four inch knife. This is the spread sealant over our boards. A simple chalk line and we have a drill with a four and a quarter inch hole bit and then a standard drill and for this specific system we're going to use a sausage gun some scissors and probably the most important tool is just a simple utility knife majority of the work i'm going to be using just a simple utility knife please stick around because the last tip is something that i see a problem with all the time and i don't want to see you having that issue in your shower tip number one is always to make sure your framing is all in line with one another and you're going to need your studs 16 inches on center so making sure that you have a distance between the center of one stud to another that is a minimum of 16 inches so we're here by 15 here so you want to make sure that everything has some kind of support every 16 inches and then you want to be in line with each other so just take a straight edge like a level and make sure that everything is even with one another and the main reason for this is because the flatter the surface the easier tile installation is going to be so tip number two if you want to save a lot of time is to use a foam backer board that is already waterproof this is a lightweight foam board this we're actually using weedy in this specific situation and it's a half inch foam board that's already waterproof on the outside surface so that eliminates me having to do a, a second step of actually waterproofing it keep in mind cement board hardy backer they are not waterproof you need to waterproof that before you set tile over them we can do this entire system within less than two hours and be ready to install tile so this will save you a lot of time by using a high quality backer board for your tub surround. Tip number three is to always use the proper materials for the system that you're installing. I see way too many times people using just regular silicone in the joints and the corners of things. That is not something that thin set will bond to and you could end up problems with it. So always use the products that are associated with the, the system that you're using. For this particular project, we're using Weedy. So we wanna use the Weedy sealant. We don't wanna be using anything else other than the approved sealant for the system that we're installing. Tip number four, this is a really critical area that you have to address properly or you could possibly have leaks. And that is making sure that the tub flange area is waterproof. Now there's a couple different ways to go about this and we're gonna show you three different easy methods of addressing the tub flange. But number one is just to simply fur out the wall and allow your backer board to come down over top of that tub flange. So using plywood strips, I just ripped these down on a table saw, just get a cheap piece of plywood OSB, doesn't really matter, and cut them down and use them as furring strips to overcome the flange that you have for your tub. What these furring strips will allow you to do is to overhang the backer board over top of your tub flange and have a nice flush surface for your tile and making sure that it's waterproof. We'll show you how to do that in a few moments. So I like to use a roofing nailer for this. You can obviously just use regular screws to do this. This just speeds up the application a little bit, but basically we're just gonna be sticking this on all of the studs and the corners. And if your tub flange is thinner than this, you don't have to use half inch strips. You can use quarter inch, three eighths. I mean, they make plywood about every eighth inch increment. So you can use different size furring strips to do this. The TCNA handbook actually recommends this method of taking the backer board over the flange. A lot of the tub manufacturers uh, prefer this method as well. So we'll just use a utility knife to scribe cut and go over this flange on the left and right side. So as you can see, when I take my board up, I can now overcome my flange and, and bring this down to my tub deck. Now this is not the only step. Hold up because you, my next tip is gonna show you how to address this area properly. So when you're using sausage tubes, not only does it save you a little bit of money because you get so much more sealant out of it, it's really easy to use. You just actually just take, you don't have to cut off the top of it. You just have to 
stab the top of your sausage tube and then I'm going to cut the top of this so we get a nice larger joint. I always go with a larger hole for that because I really want to use a lot of the sealant and make sure that everything is waterproof. So we'll even go maybe a little bit bigger, something like that. And just so you know, on the sealant on Weedy, everything needs a, a one inch overlap on it. And when you're bonding it to the tub, you need a half inch bead of sealant to embed this board into. Okay, so this tip, and this is about all backer boards, is that you need to have expansion and contraction in all planes of the board, especially against the tub deck. You always wanna have an eighth inch gap between your tub and your backer board. In this instance, we're using Weedy, and they're asking for a half inch bead of sealant along the tub deck. And that half inch sealant is actually gonna buffer us an eighth inch for that expansion contraction. But no matter what backer board you, need, you use, you don't wanna just butt it straight down to the tub deck. You need to have an eighth inch gap for expansion and contraction. And this is a weedy joint sealant. It's specific for their products. You always wanna use the manufacturer proper sealant that they have recommended for it. I'm actually just gonna go over these little screws too. It's just the extra insurance on the system. Okay, so now that I can embed this down into that, that bead. You can see how it's oozing out there, that's a good thing. So we're gonna be using the proper screws that are made for the Weedy. These are just basically alkaline resistant screws. And we also have the washers that come for Weedy as well. So you always wanna use the screws and the washers for the system that you're using. And on your first screw, obviously you don't wanna be screwing into your flange. Keep it up a couple of inches. You just want to screw these washers in to where you're kind of indenting it into the board. Okay, then when you're placing these washers, you always want to make sure you follow the, the technical handbook of the product you're using. And for Weedy, it's, it's every 12 inches for your screws. So you want to make sure that you have the washers every 12 inches. And then this last screw you can actually pinch both of these boards together and save yourself a washer if you wanted to it'll save a little bit of sealant too because you're not having to put sealant over a whole nother washer as well so on this particular system we need to put a bead of sealant along the top edge of the the other board before setting the the second board on top and then any of this excess air at the bottom, you wanna use your putty knife and just make sure that's all nice and smooth. You don't wanna have a, have a bump out at the bottom. That's gonna cause a problem for your towel work. So one thing about foam board that's really nice is that it's easy to scribe cut. So if it's a little tight, you can just do that in place. Makes it much easier than traditional cement boards. At this point, you can pinch both of these boards together and save yourself a, a couple screws. So one thing about choosing a, a backer board is, you know, I think in this, this day and age is thinking about, you know, is it safe for the installer is it safe for the person in the home. With Weedy, this, this particular product, the sealant doesn't have any VOCs. It doesn't even have a, an odor to it, so it doesn't really smell like a chemical. And the board itself isn't emitting, you know, when I'm screwing screws through it, it's not emitting any type of odor or any CFC. So it's a good idea to kind of pay attention to what you're purchasing and making sure that, um, you know, you're not emitting uh, harmful chemicals and, and, and installing something in your home that might be emitting something harmful to you. So the second way you can go about achieving waterproofing around your tub flange is just to simply run the board on top of your flange and then filling in the tub gap. So again, all backer boards need an eighth inch spacing for expansion and attraction. And we're gonna be using a bead of seal sealant to embed on top of our flange. So we're gonna measure on top of our flange. Now you always have to make sure that your flange is actually not gonna be thicker 
than your backer board. And if so, then you might have to actually shim out this wall as well. So, but this is actually showing just about a half inch. So the half inch backer board will meet up with the top of that. So let's go ahead and measure what we need here. So we're gonna go from the corner and we're gonna be go, slipping this underneath of our existing corner bead here. And we're gonna re, refasten our corner bead after we get the board up. So 33 and a half is our width. 33 and a half. Okay, so we'll measure over to our Hub spelt. And we're going to measure on top of our flange to the center of our tub spelt, so two and a quarter. So I just like to use a one inch spade bit. I like to have a lot of room around my piping so that I it slips over easily. I make sure it sits above the tub deck. And then with the back, since this is a foam backer board, I can just mark where my valves are by simply hitting my board. And then I have an indicator here and here for where my valve, my center of my valves are. Okay, for the main shower valve, I wanna use a four and a quarter inch hole saw bit. Okay, then for our Chancer valve, we're going to use a three and three eighths bit. This will be for our handheld. Okay, so I just need to cut a little bit here. This needs to be underneath that corner bead. Okay, so in this particular installation, we're going to put another half inch bead of caulk on my tub flange to sustain that half inch or that eighth inch gap for expansion contraction, but also helps seal this board to my flange. And then we'll go alongside with a bead where the boards meet in the corner. As you can see, now I have my board where the flange sits nice and flat all the way along. And we can just make sure that we have plenty of sealant within this void. We're gonna address this a little bit later as well, but we just wanna make sure that we have enough sealant bonded to that, to that flange. You don't have to use hole saws. You don't need to be spending $100 on hole saws to do this. You can actually cut all of this with a utility knife and get pretty accurate with that as well. But we'll show you in a little bit later how we're gonna address the valves and uh, the ports. It's really highly important that you address these to be waterproof because this is obviously a hole in the system that could potentially leak. Ten and three quarter, 11. Okay, then I like using a chalk line to Chuck my lines here. Okay, so. Okay, so you want some sealant between your boards on this system, some along your corner as well. Okay, so then again, we can just pinch the two boards together with one washer. Then the third way to achieve this is to actually notch out your backer board. Now this is only gonna be probably done with a, a few select backer boards that you can do this with. Obviously Wheaties being one of them. The idea is to basically cut out where the flange is gonna be. So this is just a demonstration of it, but you wanna cut out enough of the flange so you wanna be able to cut this out so that this can actually slide over top of, of your flange. Now I have to obviously get much deeper than that, but this is the, the main concept and allows me to keep the board flat on here, but also overextend the flange. 
Okay, so if you're gonna notch over this, first thing you need to do is just to determine how far you have to notch it. So we have an inch and a half, this flange is an inch and a half thick. So we need to be able to notch that backer board an inch and a half for it to slide over. So we wanna make sure that our, our blade is an inch and a half above here. We'll just go a little bit more to make sure that it, it is. And then what we're gonna do is slide this through the table saw. So we want to take a little bit more than half because that flange is a little bit thick. So we want to be able to just basically leave just the face of this. So this is going to be our niche. We're going to cut this out after we get this board up. This is gonna be custom made, so we're gonna be using extra weedy or extra foam backer board to waterproof this niche. This particular situation was kind of nice, un unconventional. It had a bump out, so we're able to get a nice, really deep niche in this area. So custom making these things really provides a nice look and it's really simple to do. And really, honestly, isn't costing me any more money because it's just the extra pieces that I already had left over from the tub surround. And if you're using this existing corner bead, I don't wanna to have to do any more drywall work than I have to. So I'm leaving this corner bead. But what you wanna do is score the edge of this because you don't want that drywall mud. I don't wanna be basically adhering towel to drywall mud. And you're gonna to wanna to waterproof this system. We'll show that here a little bit in the in the video on how to address this corner bead. This is an area um, that if water actually penetrated any of this corner bead, it's gonna rust out very quickly. We have our board notched out as you can see. So we basically just created a, an L cut out of our board and this is gonna allow the waterproofing to go over top of our flange. Again, you're gonna want some sealant basically where this board is meeting this flange. So put a bead across the top of this. And then just because this is actually pretty flimsy, I'm gonna actually put some right along the whole flange all the way along and then including at the bottom. Because again, you really want that eighth inch gap between the, the bottom of that backer board and the panel. And then we'll go along the corner. All right, so that slips right down over top of that flange now. Again, that's kind of flimsy at the bottom just because of how thick that flange is. But that's why I have it, that additional support of the sealant underneath of there. So that's, an, that's the third way that you can attach, address this tub flange. And most likely you're only gonna be able to address that with a foam backer board like this that you can actually notch that out. Smooth out this excess. And we'll address that here in a little bit cut out our niche so we had 27 47 let's cut this out with a utility knife okay and we'll continue our 12 inch screw pattern here should we have washers around our niche here. Just get this flush with it. You can use an oscillating tool. I find this to be a little bit easier than a utility knife. There's another bedroom on the other side of here. So I'm not gonna be able to actually screw anything in, but what I'm gonna do is just use the sealant as my adhesion to it. And then when I have the sides and the bottom and the top in place, it's gonna hold that back waterproofing in place. So just use a generous amount of the sealant on the back here. And then we'll take our cutout that we cut out and do that at the back of the niche. Okay, then we got basically seven inch pieces. We're gonna overhang it and we'll cut it flush with the outside wall. I find that to be a little bit easier. So we'll cut some seven inch pieces. This is that this is kind of pitching towards the shower. It doesn't have to be much, just maybe like a 16th or so. So make sure that your bottom plate, and if it's not, you're gonna to wanna to build something up or maybe put a shim back there, do something to make this pitch. So what I'm gonna do is put a bead 
on my outside board here. And I'm gonna be putting a bead right up against the backer here. Screw it into place. Okay, so we use our oscillating tool to get this nice and flush with the outside board. Okay, so then once we get that right size fit, put it in all the corners, the bottom here and then along the side of the edge of the board. Okay, so this tip is really important as well, is making sure that you have waterproofing alongside your tub. I always recommend at least a couple inches of waterproofing. This is a very problematic area. If this was just drywall coming to the tub, this is a common area where water comes down the side of the tub and deteriorates that drywall. So if you can tile that and waterproof it, you'll be much better to go with, with uh, waterproofing against that tub. So we'll seal all this against the tub. Get a little bit of sealant up against this portion of your weedy board. Okay, so now we have all the board on here. We're gonna go ahead and refasten our corner bead. So we're gonna seal all the corners on this foam backboard. You always wanna make sure that you're paying attention to the technical handbook of the product that you're using and making sure that you're using the right amount of sealant. The rule of thumb for Weedy is any screw hole, making sure that you have one inch of sealant around that actual washer and then in the corners using, uh, having a, a one inch layer on either side. Now what really helps out with that is using a corner trial this will make sure that you have a continuous bead going down that corner. Again, I like using the sausage gun because it gives me a lot more sealant than a regular caulking tube. So we're just gonna really give a nice bead in that corner. Okay, then I'm gonna go down along the side just because I have all these washers fastening my system. I'm just, I want to make sure I have that one inch of overlap. And I'm going to just put that third bead up along the corner here, make sure that we're hitting all of our washers and we're going to maintain that one inch of sealant. Okay, so we'll just use some of this excess sealant. I don't want to waste any of this stuff. And while I have this excess, we'll go one inch around these corners of my niche. We'll go ahead and do the same thing in the corners of the niche. Slow overlap on your main seams too. Don't worry about this corner if we're going to address that in a moment, but we just want to get the main field ones done. And then where I missed my screw areas there, you can always patch. So I missed, I missed my stud here. I'm just going to add some sealant there. Just make sure that it covers over one inch over the board. Hey, so if you like these tips, please give us a thumbs up. It helps other people find these videos and we want to make sure you're doing these things properly.
So these next tips are probably the most important tips of this entire video. So keep watching. You want to make sure that you do this right. When you're doing this option of the tub flange where you're actually putting the board on top of the flange, you want to add a sealing tape in addition to it to overlap the board and the flange. In this particular instance, we're using Weedy. So we have the Weedy sealing tape that we're going to be installing. And this is just going to ensure that this bond between the two boards or the flange and the board are, are well waterproofed. So let's just cut this to the size of the tub. Now what we're going to use on that is a, it's not the weedy sealant, it's the 620 sealant that we're going to be using. So this is a little bit more fluid than this traditional weedy sealant. It's not as thick as you can see, it's a little bit more watery. And this is basically fluid enough or to bond the sealing tape to the board. Once you get a good generous bead on there, you want to just feather this out. Okay, then you're going to bed. You want to be able to see some of that sealant coming out of the top. We don't want water penetrating this corner bead, so we're going to use the sealing tape on this corner bead as well. So let's run a, a bead down the entire width. And on the weedy. And this same method would be used if this was just a straight wall with drywall. This is the way you're going to want to transition the drywall transition by using this sealing tape. So I'm going to embed that ceiling tape in here. I'll just cut this little flap here. Okay, so this area, I always see a problem. So many tubs I pull out, I see caulking around my tub spout. I see big gaping holes around my piping. The way to eliminate that is to use a flex collar. This is made by Weedy, but many different manufacturers make pipe seals to go around plumbing protrusions. So I find this to be really important to put, especially around the tub spout, because water is coming down the wall, it's hitting your body, and it's going right behind that tub spout, and this is a perfect area for water to get behind the wall and into your wall cavity. So having a pipe seal will ensure that this is gonna be leak free. And this is basically made for a half inch and a three quarter inch piping size. So it just kind of seals around that pipe. As you can see, like it has a, has a little collar around it that's gonna really seal around this. So you could feel confident that this is gonna seal properly to the pipe that comes out for your tub spout. So again, we're gonna use the 620. Embed that into the... And that'll ensure that you have a nice seal around the pipe. We have a mixing valve flex collar this collar will go around my valve. The purpose of this is to allow the water, if, if any water came back here, it would hit on the outside of this edge and come down the wall. So there's two sides of this. It has a, a wider piece and then a thinner piece. This, act, this part actually goes into the wall. Unfortunately, the way I cut this, I'm a little off. So I'm gonna actually cut this out a little bit with a utility knife. And get this more centered and again we're going to use the the 620 
We have this transfer valve. They unfortunately do not make a valve seal for this. So the way that you can address this, first I'm gonna cut off a little bit more because I don't want it to be so tight against my valve. Let's so give, give ourselves a little bit of room here. But really the way you want to address this is just to simply run a bead of sealant, kind of raising it up above the board all the way around the opening. So and really the, the idea, it's basically doing the same concept as this valve seal. If any water hits there, it'll go around and not inside the hole. So that's basically all that this is gonna do, just kind of creates a little bit of a, a dam. And if there's any water that gets behind your escutcheon plate, it'll just route itself around the opening. Well, I hope these tips helped you out today. If they have, please give us a thumbs up. And if you're stuck with your own bathroom project and you're having questions, leave us some comments down below. We'd be happy to help you out. Also, check out our site at bathroomrepairtutor.com. We have step-by-step -step tutorials on how to start your bathroom to completing it, installing tile, installing vanities, toilets, you name it. We have a lot of that on our site and we're here to help you out. So thanks and we'll see you in the next video.